long time no see creeps it's me that dead girl and this is infamous indie i know it's been quite some time since i posted any content uh you know shit happens but i'm sure you all remember what it is that i do here i basically sit down with you all and i share with you a true crime story from my home state of indiana so more often than not, I feel like I really tend to focus on um, cold cases or unsolved cases, things from the past, if you will. So as I kind of try to ease my way back into filming and creating content, I decided that I would go with a more recent story. Now, I'm sure everyone knows and it's, you know, pretty obvious that I've been interested in true crime for quite some time now. And with that being said, um, I'm a little bit desensitized. I fear that uh, not very much really shocks me anymore. But I recently um, came across this story out of Jasper County, Indiana. And um, I got to say, your girl was shook. Shooketh to my core. On September 20th, 2024, the Jasper County Sheriff's Office received a tip about a possible murder confession. After a night of heavy drinking, 31-year-old Stephen Villay confided in an acquaintance that he had murdered two of his children and then burned their remains in a fire pit outside of his home. The report also seemed to suggest that Stephen Valet drowned one of these children and smothered the other with a pillow. This tip led police to a residence in the 4200 block of Old Orchard Lane in Wheatfield, Indiana. Allegedly, this is where Stephen Valet committed these absolutely horrendous acts. And I also forgot to mention there is a second person involved in this case and her name is Samantha Sabea. I'm not sure if I'm saying either one of their last names correctly, but yeah, I've said it before. I'll say it again. If you are a piece of shit, I'm not going to go out of my way to pronounce your name correctly. Sorry, not sorry. So law enforcement did disclose that the couple no longer lives at this residence. However, on September 27th, the current owner of the property did allow police to search the grounds. Canine units were brought in uh, to help out with this investigation and they did end up hitting on two specific areas of the property, one being a fire pit and the other location being a pile of ashes that was found near the garage on the property. These recovered materials were then sent to Indianapolis to kind of help determine what they were. Anthropologists later confirmed that they were indeed bone fragments, but additional testing was needed to confirm whether or not they were human or animal remains. Now, before this property on Orchard Lane was searched, police were actually able to track down Stephen and Samantha. And I guess they'd kind of been hiding out at this Kentland Motel in Kentland, Indiana, which I've never heard of, but obviously it exists. On September 20th, 2024, both Samantha and Stephen were brought in for questioning. And at this time, they have both denied that either one of them have ever had more than one child. They also claim to have never experienced a miscarriage or a stillbirth. Stephen and Samantha did admit to having one child, but, and here's the kicker, this child was undocumented, meaning there's no birth certificate, no proof, anything that this child even exists, because apparently Samantha had given birth to this child at home. When investigators conducted a records check with the Jasper County Health Department, they were able to confirm that this child basically, in the eyes of the state, never existed. So as the investigation continues, the investigators actually obtain uh, phone records from both Stephen and Samantha. Analysis of these phone records would later reveal that there were numerous text messages that indicated Stephen Valet had in fact killed and burned multiple children. Just to kind of give you 
an example of some of the texts that were found. I believe one was from Samantha to a friend and it stated, Stephen burnt my babies. And then there was another one that I came across that said, and I quote, you killed my babies. I have their DNA in my body forever. And that second text was between Samantha and Stephen. So basically at this point in the investigation, they're both denying anything, all of it. They have no clue. They only have one child. Not strange at all that, you know, you just popped out a baby at home and have no documentation that this child even exists. On October 3rd, 2024, a second interview was conducted with Stephen Villay. And it was during this conversation where Stephen finally admits that Samantha had in fact given birth to a male child in their home in 2018. He told police that Samantha had given birth while he was at work and he had actually come home to find her passed out in the bathroom floor with a child between her legs. And I kind of questioned this. Was this kind of a situation where she was hiding her pregnancy maybe? Or, you know, did he even know at all that she was even pregnant? Either way, Stephen claims that the child was unresponsive. He said that the child did not appear to be awake or breathing in his opinion. So then he proceeded to clean the child up, wrap it in a blanket, and he placed it in a cardboard box. According to court documents, he waited three days before he finally buried the child in their backyard. When Stephen Valet was asked why he waited so long to bury the child's remains, he simply stated that after three days, he had determined that, you know, the child was dead and not going to be coming back to life. Stephen then began to tell them of a second pregnancy that had occurred in which this was another situation where he was at work and Samantha had given birth prematurely in the bathtub of the home. Stephen claims that upon his arrival home from work, he found the baby wrapped in a blanket and it was already deceased. He then said that he buried the second child near the first child in the backyard. So this is where, for me anyway, it kind of gets a little more murky, if you will. So as I said, he buried both of them in the backyard near their garage or whatever. And apparently he waited anywhere from between three and five years to dig up the remains and then decided, hmm, I should burn these in the fire pit. He also went on to tell the investigators that he had actually scooped up some of the ashes and placed them in a necklace as a memento. So I know that people do this when a loved one or a pet passes away, you know, kind of to carry a piece of that person with you. But as I'm sitting here thinking about it in this kind of light, um, it just kind of seems like serial killer memento, like a trophy type of thing. I don't know. Either way, it's really twisted. And apparently after he had burned the remains, he ended up finding some bone fragments, which he confessed to collecting and moving over to um, the ash pile that they had found at the side of the garage. As the investigator started to dig more into the background of Samantha and Stephen, they did discover that there had been a long history of battery and abuse between the two. So in having these conversations with Stephen on October 3rd, investigators basically determined that Samantha Sabea had made no effort to protect herself or her children. She also made absolutely no effort to notify the proper authorities about the births, deaths, burials, anything in regards to these children. Stephen Valet and Samantha Sabea were both arrested on October 3rd, 2024. And bear with me for a second here. I'm going to read off these charges because there are quite a few. 
So they are being charged with murder, neglect of a dependent, causing death, abuse of a corpse, obstruction of justice, and failure to report a dead body. Several news and media outlets have been, you know, reporting on this case. And from everything that I've seen or read, it is believed that all of these victims were undocumented. Police have indicated that they were unable to find any medical or government documents, even proving the existence of the victims. And as I did say, um... A little earlier on in the video, Samantha and Stephen did have one child in their care at the time of their arrest. And I read that that child has been taken into DCS custody. Which honestly, I hate to see or hear about any child going into the system. But in this case, I feel like that is probably for the best. And I say that only because this child was undocumented, just like the other victims. So who's to say they wouldn't also take the life of this child and conceal it as well? As I said, this case is recent. It is active. It is ongoing. So as I get updates in, I will share them. So you absolutely can look for a part two in the future. I would definitely love to hear everyone's thoughts and opinions on this case. Please feel free to get a conversation started in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Sorry it's taken so long to post anything, but uh, as I said, I am back in the saddle again. So keep your eyes peeled for new content because I promise it is coming your way. Stay spooky, y'all. Thanks for watching.